Hello, this is my tool I've made to help you use your own knowledge and information uh, with ChatGPT to get it to kind of answer questions based on that knowledge or to just produce output that's kind of similar to examples that you provide it. Uh, so I'll see what are my contact details. And first it finds the information that has the same meaning as the question. Um, so even though this says Mike's phone number and that actually says contact details, so it's not like a word for word match. Um, it's still figured out that that's what I'm talking about. I'd use that to answer this question. Um, it's tailored the question based on the wording that I've used. So Mike's contact details so instead of saying Mike's phone number. So it's done like a good job there of getting the information and tailoring the answer to that information. Um, I'll show you the, where you add the information and the knowledge that you wanted to have. So here you can paste in URLs, it can either be your own company URLs or it can be support docs if you want to be an expert on a particular area or it can just be a long article that you, you don't want to read it so you just put it in and ask it questions about it. It can be information guides and stuff that you think you might need to reference in the future. Um, you can also just paste in text, so you can paste in text here like I've done. Um, no matter which one it is, it will summarize that for you and it will add in questions as well that relate to the content that help it kind of find the right content. Um, or if you already have a question and answer, so either to do the type of content that you normally produce or uh, customer service type and questions that you've answered before, then you can just fill both those fields in yourself as well. Um, so I've put in a uh, yeah, documents for something called Google Analytics 4, which I wanted help with. So this is my Google Analytics 4 expert that I can ask questions to. Um, I put in a French website just to show you as an example. So it's a guide on how to swim. When I've run it, it's automatically translated most of that to English. Um, but even if the summary was in French, it would still work. It still answers the questions for you. Um, I put in the phone number and then I've put in these, which I'll show you as an example now. Um, so tell me a rhyme. Here you go. So we've got it on the strictest settings at the moment. So what it's done is it's looked at the type of rhymes I normally make, and it's made one pretty much identical to, to the one that it has there. Um, if I wanted to loosen up the settings, so if I just said answer the question instead. So with the first one, it's like and you know the answers are going to be very, very reliable. It's going to be less creative because it can't just write whatever it would chat GPT would normally write, but it's good if you need accurate answers. So customer service type, type stuff where you want it to be accurate or um, if it's some, some of the way you don't want misinformation um, from chat GPT, then use that one. If it doesn't know the answer, it will just tell you it doesn't know the answer. Um, or you've got the broader prompt to answer the question where it will essentially just, it may ignore the information that's there until it gets sent to it. Uh, but as you can see, it's just randomly answered the question, basically. Uh, so yeah, it depends on what you want to use it for and how creative you need it to be. Um, if it doesn't know the answer, if it doesn't have any information, sorry, relating to the answer, like this, um, that should just say that it doesn't know, which is perfect. That's what you want. Um, if you lower this threshold here to like 0 0.6, it will just pull in random information and it will make up a random piece of recipe for you so it will still answer the question if that's how you want to use it and um, log is whether it's um, log saves the questions for you so um, it'll save the questions and all the answers there so you, you may use that and you've got your two models to choose from so turbo is the actual chat gpt model and uh, davinci is the model we normally use for api so they give you slightly different answers and kind of understand things a little bit differently so davinci um, it's more likely to just do what you tell it to do. Um, Turbo is obviously designed to be a, a chatbot, so it's a little bit more chatty, it gives longer answers, um, but sometimes it kind of goes off and does its own thing a little bit more. It tends to be, I find it's a little bit less reliable, it gets confused about different things, um, but it is 10 times cheaper than DaVinci, so if it works okay for you and you're happy with it, then that's fine. Um, when you're adding new information, do, do, do. Um, whatever model you've picked there, that's what it will use to do this summary. And then, I can't remember if I already told you, about, but if you change the information, or you add new URLs or whatever, so please tell me a joke. 
I think I told you this, didn't I? I've shot this video a lot of times. <laughs> um, yeah, it does cross there. Uh, so that means it needs to update the information now because the input's changed. So it needs to update these codes to mean the new information. Um, so the first time you run it, it may take a while if you've added a lot of information. Might be better to add it in chunks, run it, test the answers it gives you, um, and then yeah, just carry on like that. Um, so tell me how I can learn to swim. It's pulled in the information um, from the French card. And it will eventually answer the question. <laughs> it does feel a bit slow because it's kind of laid out as though it's like a chat bot, but it's, the API is slower than your normal chat bot, unfortunately. And yeah, so it's answered the question. If it does answer it in the wrong language, so if you pull in a French card and answer it in French, you just say there, tell me in English, basically. It will do that. So yeah, that's a prompt settings. That's how you ask the questions. It doesn't. It's you can't chat to it like you can with GPT. It's just one question each time. But you could always do a more detailed question for your next one. So tell me how to swim. Tell me more about floats on your back or whatever, and then it will answer the more precise questions. That's really how it's designed to be used. Um, there's a lot. I'm sure there's lots of ways you could use it. There's lots of types of knowledge you could put in there um, to do different tasks, different examples you want to give to GPT, and different answers and stuff. And to get your own copy, there's an instructions tab down there. And click file and make a copy, like it says there. So that's that one. And then you've, if you haven't got an API key already, so you go to the OpenAI website and get log in using the same details you used for ChatGPT and ask it for an API key, and you paste it into that square there. Um, you get eighteen dollars free credit. So with the DaVinci model, um, that's enough for like kind of free books worth of input and output. Uh, the Turbo model is ten times cheaper. It's more like thirty bucks. Um, here's some examples of different ways you can use it, which some of which I may have forgotten to mention. So might, you can have a look through that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, scrapes the URLs, adds the content. Um, I've shown you the examples. Showed you the semantic search, showed you how to make a copy. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's everything that you should need. Um, if you have any problems, let me know and I can kind of have a look. Uh, but yeah, I hope, hope you find it. Oh, you can share it as well, obviously. You can share it. So if you want to use a company level one, um, you share it at the company level or share it with other people and you can all kind of make it like a central hub for your knowledge and, and use it like that if that's how you want to use it. Um, but yeah, I hope you find it useful.